Maybe I have some question for you. Yes, Mother. You have a question? No? Ah, oh, sorry. No, I don't have any question. Jai Guru Dave. So, um, Guruji. I've been practicing Atma Kriya Yoga for a little over a year now. <coughs> and I really focus on the practice and am doing it um, every day, dedicatingly. And I still don't really feel or understand how it connects to bhakti. And so maybe you could shed some light on how Atma Kriya Yoga enhances our 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 bhakti life and our bhakti experience. I don't know how many of you have done kriya here, but in bhak in uh, atma kriya there is nine form of bhakti, nine specific kriya, and each kriya is related to one aspect of bhakti. And, uh, and of course, the last one is the main career what you do it's called atma nevinan bhakti you see the point is like krishna said you have to engage you know you have a mind you have a body you can't just sit idly so you're engaging into that you know when you're practicing your your, your sadhana or you're pr doing your kriya itself you know but if your mind is focusing upon Yes, I'm doing that. Where is the bhakti into it? Are you doing it wholeheartedly, or are you doing it to expect something in return? No. Very often, whatever we do, there's always an expectation behind there. You know, I'm doing that. I shall gain something from that. You know, I should feel a little bit energy somewhere. I should feel some kundalini shakti rising somewhere some vibration, you know, uh, then I will think, yes, my bhakti is right. No? If I don't feel it, my bhakti is not right. I have to question it. No? But it's not true. If you have been initiated in something, your duty is to do it. Not ask any question. Whenever you are right, whatever you are, whenever you will, uh, you are ready to feel, automatically will come. But no, we have to have a certain power over it. You know. We have to do it. That's why you see very often people set a certain goal in their life, which means I will practice that for 12 months. I will practice this. Please tell me, you chant mantra. How many should I chant? How long should I chant? You know? You can't just chant it. <laughs> huh? Just chant throughout your day, all the time. You know, why this have to be bothered about? You know, Krishna said it to Arjun: Act. Your duty is to act. The result is from me. That result is not in your hand. If you act selflessly, the result will flow. But if you act egoistically, you will wait a long time to get the result. And this is the problem that everybody, you know, whenever we practice spirituality, I'm talking in general, I'm not talking only one kind. I'm not saying that ours is better than anybody else. No. Maybe it is, but. 
Krishna elevate bhakti, na? No? Without bhakti, nothing is possible. You know? so, <laughs> so, you see, when you're bhakti, when you are in bhakti, you just do it. You know, you don't concern about the result about it. Right? Chapter nine, verse thirty-one of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, automatically, those who surrender to me, my bhakta. He clearly said, my bhakta. He didn't say somebody else. He said, my bhakta. Automatically, they will have that divine knowledge. Automatically, that bliss will awake inside of them. Without them doing much, actually. You know, just because they have surrender. All the other asanas, all the exercises, everything prepared you to that point where you forget about yourself. Then he said, my bhakta are never lost. Nothing is lost for my bhakta. Why? When you look, Alana is that verse itself from the Gita. You see the assurance which Krishna gave. You know, it's not just mere assurance like that. Okay, you are practicing it, you know, you will reach somewhere if, you know. No, he said, no. The point is that that moment you surrender, the moment you say, it's not in my hand anymore. You realize that, but this is not in my hand. It is in your hand. I leave it up to you. You know best. The moment that happened, the one throw himself. It becomes so natural. And he gives that assurance that my devotee don't lose anything. Which means even death when it come, they will not lose anything. Even if you have not achieved that purpose of life in this life itself, you know. It gives you that assurance, no, you are mine, I will remind you of that. In whatever life, you know, next life you will take, I will be there. I'm eternal, you are eternal, we'll enjoy that eternity. But you belong to me. You will come to me. So coming to the point of explaining to you about the the Kriya itself, you know, it's not about trying to understand the, the, the where, which, if I practice this one, that bhav will awake, that bhakti will awake. No, it's not about that. It's about just doing it. You know. It is infused inside it. It is coded inside. You know. But when you do it with a mindless state, you will have the benefit of it. But if you're doing it with the mind, which is very active, of course, then you will have limitation. You know, you know. He said the, the, that verse. The one give that assurance. My bhakta will reside in that peace. Peace will be in them. Which kind of peace? You know? It's not a superficial peace. You no, know? ah, I am. S I want ice cream. You know, I long for ice cream. So you eat the first ice cream, second finish ice cream diminished, peace diminished also with it. You, know, you want peace, you're thirsty <laughs> for water. You, know, you drink nice cold water here in America, you like f freezing cold water. <laughs> I don't know if people how you drink this, but it's amazing. <laughs> uh, how are you? How did you drink? How is the water? Oh, I feel peaceful. Oh, when you have drank the water, the water had to come exit somewhere else also. And you have to run quickly. Yeah. How do you feel after exiting the water? Oh, peaceful. But these are not permanent. You, know? you will feel peace for a short time. The same thing, you have a desire to get fulfilled, you feel p peace for a short time. But they are not permanent, they are not carry on, you know. One desire will lead to another desire. You, know? you rush to the bathroom, you have to rush again to the bathroom. You know, you're not finished, because you keep eating and keep drinking. So the peace that you entertain by the mind, it's very limited. 
And the Bhagavan said, no, my devotee will reside in a certain peace in whatever happened to them. You know, maybe they fall sick, maybe they are in deep problem, maybe they are in danger. But they don't deviate from that sense of trust and faith. How quickly we deviate from that, you know? Because our mind is so focused upon limitation of happiness, you know? then we don't fall upon that eternal happiness inside of us, in spite of us feeling it. And we want to give that insurance, no, my bhakta don't lose anything. They know, once they are seated into that bhakti itself, they are never at loss. They are dear to me. When they turn the gaze upon me and call for me, I rush to them. In the mind, when I rush to them, I, they for, I forget about myself. I come to the rescue. But if they are still holding upon the little pride and ego, I will sit there and wait for them to get rid of. That's why sometimes we want delay. <laughs> Is waiting. Let all these ego inside be consumed. You know. Let what I have to give you. Mm, you know, you are a magnet. You have attracted me. So let you be pulled to me. Let me be pulled to you. And let not be anything in between. And this is when you practice kriya. You know, when you're doing it. You know, in spite of being into the, you know, because when we are talking about bhakti, we are not talking about asana, we are not talking about breathing technique, you know. But these are all steps to purify yourself, you know, to purify your mind, to pur purify your body, to purify your samskara, to purify your heart, which is the most important of all, you know. Because if your heart is not purified, bhakti is not there. No. If your mind is not purified, the Knowledge would not be there. You may hear beautiful words, you may hear and try to understand. Yes, beautiful, I have heard it. The moment you step out, you forget about it. And so many things like this. You know, you go to a big, big lecture, sitting there, deep, you know. At the end, what have you understand? Nothing. Because you have never applied it to yourself. You have listened, yes. The, he, the ears have hear it, and you have gone out. Then you want to hear another lecture. Then you want to hear another, uh, has a beautiful thing. But it keep on like that. You're entertaining the object of this desire. You know? Once you uh, keep entertaining that kind of desire, these are not desire that will make you happy. It will not lead you anywhere. They are limited desire. You will have limited happiness from that. It will surface and will disappear. But it is not eternal. That's why throughout spirituality we say, get to know who you are. It is not this. When we say get to know, do you have you go in front of the mirror? Yeah, Swamiji have said, get to know who I am. I'm looking at myself now <laughs> into the mirror, you know. Beautiful. <laughs> there were once a brahmachari, every time he would pass in front of the mirror, I can't remember who was it anymore. Every time he would pass in front of the mirror, he would stop. <laughs> every time I would see him, you know, I mean, I would make fun of him always. Yeah. So, you see, when the mind is running toward the outside, we long only for short-term happiness. You know? And this is when we observe our mind, we observe ourselves, we see. We like to hold things around, you know. We have to, we always like to amass so many things. It's not things that we want, it's not things that we need. No, but we have it. You know, because we think we depend upon that, you know. But nothing is permanent. They are all passing. All those things that we think that we need, that we, we I say, need in our life, they're all passing. Look, we say we need 
a wife is passing. Husband, passing. We need children, it's also passing. We need something, it is passing. Life will pass, you know, and death will be there. That also will pass. But what have you achieved? You know, we like the illusion of things, you know. We like the, not the reality. We look at the mirror, we don't like it, we don't love ourselves, we love the image, but we project, you know. An image have to be in a certain way, you know. We like to hear the praises of others, because we like to hear them telling us how we should be. It's also a projection, it's also a reflection of others. You're scared to be yourself. You're scared to be, you don't know, thinking what other will think about. So we project that illusion, we attach to, us, to ourselves to that illusion, and then we hold upon that illusion because we feel good. And how would the reality reveal itself? It will never reveal itself because you are so much looking for the illusion of things, you are looking for the reflection of things not the reality. That's why when you're doing your kriya, when you're doing your sadhana, you know, when you're doing your spiritual practice, it elevates you, you know. It gives you a different sense of understanding. It's not what others have been telling you, but that what deep inside of you. That's why yoga stands for, you know. That union, union with whom? With the air? With the wall? No. Union with something which is divine. First, what is eternal inside of you, have that union with someone which is divine, which is eternal. You are eternal being, he's eternal being. Only our relation can be. No. That is our only true relationship. <laughs> All relationships are passing by. <laughs> You will soon divorce this world. Well, I'm not talking about divorcing in that way, but I'm talking just to divorce the world. You will die. No? You will go. Nothing is permanent. Only permanent is yourself. That is what 